Hello, everybody, and welcome back to NASMAR the Garage Pass Episode 7. As always, I am your host, Hershey, along with our in house NASMAR analysts, Luke and Shim. Hello again. Welcome. And we just came off of race number six at DDT International Raceway, the NASCAR Discord 400, a very pivotal race uh, historically in this series, and it was certainly a surprising entry uh to the season this uh, this time around we're gonna jump right into the results and they were some crazy ones so we're starting out with our dnqs which uh interestingly enough were the two dnqs from our first race of the season the spiral 360 nugget and prime both get their second dnq of the year uh prime's just had a horrible season but this really hurts nugget in terms of playoff positioning and we'll talk about the standings later but this one does hurt for the kuz motorsports driver uh, finishing in 18th, one of the absolute shockers was Steve, who qualified on the pole. He gained a total of 10 points in this race, and four of those were from getting the pole and having a fastest lap in qualifying, as he only scored six points in the actual race. First pole sitter ever to get out in the first round, and I'm sure we'll touch upon the other higher seeds that did not advance as well. Sal finished in 17th as his struggles continue recently in this season. Electro, again, has been up and down a lot this year, finished in 16th. Piper, her career worst finish of 15th this week. Confetti finished in 14th in the 7. And Spitzer was the last one to not advance into the final swell, finishing in 13th. Jack Tato, who absolutely dominated the last race of this track, finished in 12th place. Streamer, who came into the season undefeated here, finishes in 11th. Significantly his worst finish at this track uh, in his career. Woodpecker finished in 10th. Bloodstorm in 9th. Mozilla, who qualified, just barely got in, qualified in 18th, jumps all the way up into 8th position. And that was a theme as we go forward into the top 7, with Murakami finishing 7th, Limon Drizel in 6th, Earl finishing 5th, Winks tying his career best finish, and obviously his best finish of the season, in 4th place, with the final consisting of 3rd place Quillo, Second place, Oak, and a surprising effort from Neptune gets his second career win and second win of the season in his first final six appearance since the first race of the season. So yeah, Hershey, um, you had mentioned about how the post of Steve got out in the first uh, in the first group stage, but it wasn't only just Steve who surprisingly got eliminated, who had a fast car in qualifying, but Electro, who qualified second, Piper, who qualified fourth, and Spitza, who qualified sixth. All four of those drivers who were the top seeds in their respective groups all were eliminated in the first round, which I don't think I've ever seen that ever happen in this series so far. The low-seeded drivers, I think straight up, were the cars to beat this race. Going into the uh, final 12... Three out of six of those matchups had the lower seed qualify into the final six, which were Winx, Oak, and Drizel from their respective matchups as well. And then, looking at the finishing results, there was only one driver who qualified in the top five who finished in the top ten in the entire race, and that was our race winner, Neptune. And then, among the top five, Four of those finishers had uh, had a qualifying effort of 10th or worse, and that being Oak, who finished second, Quillo finished third, uh, Winks finishing fourth, and Earl finishing fifth. This race, I think, completely flipped the whole scope of how this season has shaped up so far. We've seen a lot of parity. We've seen a lot of uh, lower-grade drivers do well. We've had a lot of new faces up at the front, a lot of new winners, and the season just continues to have a lot of surprises. And I am i wouldn't be shocked if we would have more in these uh, final two races before the playoffs start. Yeah, at least recently in the last two races, um, I know Woodpecker and Winks have both done pretty poor in the qualifying, like one of the bottom five, yet they've both uh, made it through both group stages. Obviously, um, Woodpecker, the 18 seed, getting to finals, and Winks didn't do great here, but also got to the final six. So uh, another uh, showing of just the lower seeds kind of just not caring and still racing really well. That's kind of a theme if you look through DDT's history. Um, the outlier actually was the last race in which we still saw some upsets 
Uh, last time we were here with Spitzer finishing in fourth, we had Nugget in sixth, Confetti seventh, Sal eighth. Those were all guys who uh, he also goes down to prime and finished in ninth, uh, one of his best finishes of the year the last time we were here. So it's not surprising to see that happen at DDT, but to the level that it happened in this race, we have never seen before. Yeah, speaking on one of those drivers, we have uh, talked about him quite a bit recently, and it's uh, Confetti once again. He was coming to a pretty nice run on the group stage, but ended up spinning into the wall and then losing it to Giselle, and then on the next one just couldn't even make the lap. So you you really wish... it like Confetti has shown some merit that he could be really good, but he just keeps choking over and over. I don't know if he even has a shot at getting to uh, the playoffs, even though he's not that far out of the cut line. It's just, it's so much in a row. I just, I, I don't know if you really can believe in him for much longer. Yeah, I I just don't know if it's, you know, uh, leading pressure up until the playoffs because, you know, Confetti being in a spot where he was in the playoffs last season, you know, now he finds himself even further behind him where he would normally would be at this point. I just don't know what's really going on with that team. I don't know if it's, you know, the driver just constantly making mistakes because he's feeling the, the added pressure of needing to perform. But uh, if uh, Confetti doesn't get his act uh, together soon, then he's going to be uh, outside of the playoffs this year. And continuing on that theme of the lower-seeded drivers doing well in this race, we had two double-digit seeds make the final. Uh... Quillo finished in third. He didn't win a heat, uh, but was competitive. And then we had Oak finish in second. He had one heat win. Um, and again, they, they, they were all competitive throughout. It was just somewhat of a dominant effort by Neptune, who, who obviously had the 4-1-0 uh, win in the final. What did you guys see throughout that final matchup? And, and how interesting of a final three was that? Yeah, you, you know, like I said, like going back to the whole parody this year, I mean... These three drivers who made the, the the finals, these are, well, based off of what we've seen this year, you wouldn't really, you know, put these in your lineup of who would have a chance to win the race. But, you know, they keep showing us that there's a lot of competition this year. And uh, uh, Neptune, I do have to, you know, give him a little bit more credit this time around. He definitely did uh, have a lot more speed in the finale and did definitely deserve that win as well. Um, Oak, yeah, Oak definitely had a above average performance in that finale as well he's been he's been kind of lurking around around about the top 10 but a very strong performance here definitely uh definitely did help him out in the points as well and and uh willow just yet another surprising uh performance from him even though i think i believe we did pick him as a as someone to uh do well last race but uh as you know, you all we all know how that went, where he did make the race. But uh, I guess again, once again, we picked him one race too uh, too early. But uh, yeah, Quillo just very up and down. Yeah, an interesting thing is that like Quillo, when we were here last time, actually D and Q'd. So their their average here is a D and Q and a third. So it's like how are how are you even supposed to tell what what version of Quillo they'll be at the race? And for Oak, it was a uh, pretty good effort from him this is the first time he's ever made it to finals whereas his other times here has just been in the final six getting eliminated but um a huge thing to point out is this is now two races in a row where he faced up against Drizel and ended up beating him so i think that's a huge point for oak i don't know if that's just Drizel slipping a little bit the further we get into the series or just oak playing even better yeah, and I think that can even lead us into the standings because I think that could also play a factor in how Lemon Drizel is racing out there right now. Maybe not wanting to make too many rivals as he has a pretty big points lead. Um, he is the now one of two drivers with two wins. Remember, it gets seeded based on wins first and then on points. For that lead, uh, for the number one seed, he's up by 46 points on Neptune. That is a gigantic lead with only two races to go. So maybe not as much pressure to perform for Lemon Drizel. He's got 176 points to lead the standings, and he's up by 31 points on the overall points lead on his teammate, Piper, who is at 145. Look, Piper in in second, Oak in third, who's plus 38. They're pretty much in the clear, I'd say. Uh, they need a real meltdown in the next couple of races to miss the playoffs. Uh, we have Drizel, Piper, Oak, and then Earl and Neptune to follow fourth and fifth are locked into the points, uh, locked into the playoffs with wins. 
Streamer is still in sixth. Um, didn't have a great race in in this uh, this event here at DDT, uh, surprisingly, but still 29 points to the good. Uh, the cut line is right at 100 points, so he's at 129. Uh, Bloodstorm at 124 is obviously plus 24. Steve's at 122, still pretty solid. Quillo plus 20, even with those uh, couple of DNQs this season, but he's had some standout performances as well, just really up and down. But he, you know, he moved up three spots in the points with that performance. We'll see if he can kind of keep it going these last two races, see which uh, Quillo, as you said, which one shows up to the track each week. And then we have uh, Jack Tato, who's fallen a bit. He lost four spots in the standings in this race, which is surprising uh, considering how dominant he was the last time we were here. But he's obviously locked into the playoffs with his win. He's the lowest uh, ranked winner now with Neptune jumping up uh, pretty high in the standings with his second win. Right around the cut line, though, it gets really close. So it goes from plus 20 uh, for Quillo all the way down to plus four for Electro. And that's another one of the drivers who's been really up and down this season. So... That's kind of scary to be right on that cut line. Only a few points of breathing room there. Woodpecker moved into the uh, top 12, but he's got one point on Spitzer right now, who sits at 100 points even. He lost a few spots um, in this race, but still right in the fight, uh, one point out. And then there's a pretty big gap. You drop down to Confetti, who's still sitting in 14th, even after a a few weeks that have not been great for this for this driver, but it shows you he's got the speed. He just really needs to put it together. He's minus 16 to the cut line right now. Uh, Murakami is just a couple points behind that in 15th. And we talk about parity a lot, and we could see it when Winx jumped up into a fourth place finish this week. He gained four spots from dead last in the standings to now just 22 points out of the playoffs. And in 16th, uh, he passes Sal, who uh, drops down to 17th. He's 23 points out. Uh, Nugget in 18th after that DNQ, 25 points out. And then it's looking pretty rough at the bottom for Mozilla, who's minus 32 in 19th. And Prime drops down to last place with his DNQ, sitting 46 points out of the playoffs right now. Yeah, I think a really interesting driver on the, that list there is Murakami. As he's only 18 points out, that's not that far away, but he's got to do some good racing. But... As what happened in Season 1, he started to show up for the last two races. So we could be in for another Murakami sweep at the end here. But um, I think a reason as to why he's so low is that um, I think two of the three times he has actually advanced into the groups, he's ended up pairing up with Giselle. And not to be rude to Murakami, but that is a tall order to pass to beat Giselle in the final 12. So... That's kind of ended some some of his runs a little bit prematurely. So uh, potentially, if Murakami uh, maybe gets a different matchup, we could maybe be seeing a Murakami get to like the final six, or maybe even snipes a win like he did right at the end of the last season. Yeah, and like you mentioned, the, the last two races last year, obviously there were some different circumstances with uh, the insert switching that happened at the end of last year. But Murakami came up pretty much out of nowhere. He was further out of the playoffs than Prime is right now and nearly pointed his way in um, with a second place and then a win in the last two races. So it, it'll be interesting to see if he can pull out that uh, same kind of performance with maybe not as much help as he got last year. Uh, we'll see if he's still got that clutch gene in him. And so heading into our race picks, we'll review uh, who you guys chose to win the race uh, this past weekend. We'll start with Luke, and your uh, underdog to win this race was Oak, who actually ended up being the highest finisher of any of our picks. Uh, he finished second in this race, oh so close to that first career win. What'd you like from Oak? What I liked is that I finally saw the speed that I've been used to seeing from Oak since last season. This was definitely one of his, or, or pretty much it basically was his best race of the year. Of course, uh, getting to the the finale for the first time ever since uh, season one spiral, uh, the second spiral race, which was the Vortex 720. Um, like Shem had already mentioned about earlier, Oak did beat Drizel in order to make the finals. And if you're able to beat Drizel at anything in this series, then that means something. You definitely have the capability or having, or having a really good race. Oak was able to stay right there with Drizel a lot of the times during their uh, final six matchup. And it was actually very interesting to see both of my picks kind of go at it. And no matter how you slice it, one of them was going to outclass the other to get to the finals. And uh, fortunately for Oak, it worked out in his favor as he was able to dethrone the, 
the powerhouse that is Le Monde Drizel. And that's I feel like that's kind of a catchphrase of yours. If you can beat beat Drizel, that means something. Uh, that shows how good Le Monde Drizel has been this season. Um. Sham, for you, it did not turn out as well for your picks, um, but we still got a lot to talk about in terms of those picks, and your underdog to win this race was Spitzer, who ended up in 13. Yeah, honestly, you kind of called it, just like season one. Of He was on the cut line, he was headed to uh, DDT, his best run in the first attempt in race three, but then just kind of dropped it once again. He was the number six seed, looked pretty good in qualifying, but I guess just classic DDT where the qualifying doesn't mean much and just he wasn't able to eke out a win anywhere yeah and that's a tough one for spitzer i i talked about it a little bit on the last episode where kind of going into race six last year was in a similar slightly worse points position i believe than he was this year um but really the end of the season hurt spitzer a lot and he ended up not making the playoffs and finished uh, deep in the field in the points so hopefully he can turn it around the last couple races but so far in his career, Spitzer's not been an extremely clutch driver, so we'll, we'll see if he can turn it around, but that was his best track, and uh, unfortunately, he kind of dropped the ball on that one. Yeah, along with the next two coming up, Spiral and Mayhem, this season he did not have good performances. He had like 17th and 18th, so it's going to be a rough ride for Spitzer to actually get into the playoffs now. But if there's anything to say, he had his best race, one of his best races here at DDT earlier, and he flipped that one around, so maybe he can do it better and, and flip Spiral and Mayhem the opposite way and, and perform and get into the playoffs for the first time in his career. Very true, very true. And for your uh, favorites to win the race last week, Luke, you picked Lemon Drizel. You already touched on him a little bit, but what did you see from him overall uh, before he lost to Oak? Well, yeah, the reason why I picked Drizel the last time is that I believe that he could be the one to dethrone Streamer, the undefeated uh, Streamer. And he kind of got a bit of an unlucky matchup as he was facing up against the undefeated streamer that last race. But now he had a little bit of luck on his side. He was able to uh, make make quick haste of the uh, the early group stages and make it to the final six. Uh, I I thought that he, uh, Drizel was about to get 3-0 sweeped by Oak, but you know, classic Drizel fashion, we had to witness a very close matchup into a final sudden death. Uh, 2v2 uh, race against the two of them and uh, uh, Oak got the better of him this time so uh, you know nothing really much to note from Drizel you know just you know making it a little bit more interesting for us the viewers uh, Drizel definitely had had the speed today but uh, just didn't really have enough to get to the finals but overall still much better than uh, his uh, first race here and Sham your favorite to win the race Boy, it was looking so good after qualifying, and it fell apart quickly for Steve. I mean, I really don't know what much else to say. You're the pole, like, as stated, the pole has always gotten to at least the final six, other than the one time from Earl in race eight. So, I mean, can't say anything more than he blew it hard. But, like, he got to the finals last time we were here. Seemed like it was going to be a pretty good effort, but... Just did not happen. Yeah, and I think it was really surprising because even you could hear Rick O'Shea when he was calling it multiple times said, you know, good luck to the 66 because the, the matchup was Steve the pole sitter and streamer. And those two got together on the first heat. Mozilla went by and then all of a sudden you're facing off against one of the best to run a DDT streamer who's got two wins here. And it just kind of fell apart for Steve. Um, you know, but while we're on Steve and like we said, that's the first time a number one seed's ever been knocked out. If there's something to hang your hat on, it's that the number two seed got out as well. <laughs> there were a lot of top seeds going down. So unfortunately for Steve, uh, his second poll of the season didn't pan out the way uh, we were hoping. And now turning our sights to the penultimate race of season two of NASMARB. It is the Maubau 400 at Spiral Speedway, our second trip uh, first since the first race of the season. Uh, Luke, who is your favorite to take the win this weekend? So. I know we've been using a lot of the previous season stats to really gauge our predictions as to who we think are going to do well. But what if I didn't do that? Like I've said before, this season has been completely different in terms of parity. We've had a lot of a lot of new faces up at the front. We've had new new race winners this year. So I'm going to go 
I'm going to go a completely different approach. This is notoriously his worst track in the series. He has a D and Q, and he has a best finish of only ninth. Does that really matter in a series like this? We've seen Jack Tato. He's, he used to be terrible at DDT, and he dominated the first DDT race with that win. We've seen Spitza have a career race at the second Hyper race. So that's why I'm picking Streamer for the first time this season to be my favorite to win at, the, at this next race. And yes, I was in line. This is his worst track. But does that really matter at all? I don't think it does. Streamer has been pretty average this year. Hasn't made a finale appearance at all compared to his uh, three-win season last year. I think with the randomness that's been this season, with having a lot of different drivers up at the front, almost every single race, I think we're bound for another surprise. And I think Streamer's going to go out there and he's going to have a chance and he's going to go ahead and win at Spiral. Well, that's a fascinating prediction. Um, you mentioned last year that he had three wins. He also had four finals appearances. And that four in a row finals ended at this race last year. So we'll see if he turns it around. But like you said, this is definitely his worst track. That's that's a pretty bold pick. I'd say maybe that's an underdog pick uh, more than a favorite. But uh, we'll see how it plays out for Streamer. He'll have Malbao on the hood um, in the Malbao 400. So maybe that'll bring him some luck. And Sham, who do you have as your favorite to win at Spiral Speedway this weekend? I mean, yeah, touching on Luke's... Uh... The fact that Streamer hasn't even won yet, won yet is kind of surprising. But another thing that he said is it's his first time picking Streamer. Well, for me, I'm going to be doing the same. And it'll be my first time picking for Drizelle to be the winner of this race. I know we were saying that Drizelle's kind of just hanging in the back and just kind of letting it flow because he's already in such a big points lead. But it's still, it's still Drizelle. He got second place here when we were here last time and almost was potentially in the win column against Neptune. So I feel like it definitely would not be a, a surprise to see Drizelle maybe get to finals again and maybe end up winning. I definitely think it would not be a shocker to everyone if Lemon Drizelle makes it. Um, like you said, he made it to the finals last time at this track. Uh, he didn't have a great time last year here, but I don't know how relevant that is anymore because uh, we've seen Drizelle be extremely dominant this season. And um, you know, he could potentially just straight up wrap up the number one seed if he's able to get his third win of the season this weekend. And with our favorites out of the way, we will head into your underdog picks. Uh, we'll start with Sham's underdog. Who do you got? Well, I actually have a teammate of Dr uh, Drizelle's. It might come to a surprise, but it is not Earl or Woodpecker. I'm going to be going for Piper this time. Um, as stated, uh, this is Piper's only finals appearance of all the tracks, I feel like Piper, it's pretty easy to get a read on Piper. They have so far had a finals appearance here, um, a final six at Piper and, and Mayhem, and two awful places at DDT. So uh, judging by that logic, I feel Piper should be having a pretty good race here because it was their first time on the field. They really surprised everyone by getting to the finals. So... I think there's a good chance that they could get to the finals again and maybe end up eking out a win, even though they're still really high above the cut line. Yeah, they're, they're second overall in points, too, even with a couple of rough races at DDT, because they've been so consistent getting to the final six. And like you said, that was the only race that they advanced from the final six, even though they've made it uh, in four races this year. Um, but that is their only finals. They got a couple of wins, uh, but weren't able to pull out the overall event win. Uh, but we'll see if Piper can get her first career win. That would be, I think, a a big victory for, for her and for that team. And Luke, who do you have as your underdog pick? Well, if you guys thought my favorite to win was insane, wait till you hear this one. <laughs> you might think I'm crazy. Well, you know, what's a, what what's predicting if, if you're not just going to put yourself out there? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to I'm going to say Winx is my underdog pick for this race. Oh. And I have oh. I have a lot of reasoning behind this one. Sounds oh. sounds like there are two picks here. You just threw a dart at a wheelboard cuz <laughs> I am very confused. 
stats. So like I've said, how much do the previous season stats really mean in a season like this? Well, here's the thing. Last season at this point, Winx's former teammate Murakami turned up the wick right around at this point in the season. After the sixth race, Murakami had finished 12th, which was his second best finish of his career up until that point, until he went on to get a second place finish and the win at Mayhem to qualify for the playoffs. If Murakami had one of his best races at race six, Who's to say that Winx, having his best race of the season, just a while ago finishing fourth, can't do the same thing? And another thing to actually note, at this point, after the sixth race of the season last year, Confetti was 18th in points, with a total of 80 points to his name, and was 23 points behind the cutoff. And in the last two races, a 5th place finish and a 4th place finish vaulted him up to qualify for the playoffs by being the last driver in by only 4 points. Winx, after the 6th race this season, is currently 16th with 79 points and is 22 points behind the cutoff. Does history repeat itself? It could. I mean, I certainly support it as I was the first to pick Winx and he d and here, so I I'd support it, but still a very, very bold claim. It's definitely an interesting pick. You got a couple of uh, surprising picks uh, of the two. I think I mentioned this last time when Sham picked him here, but Winx, for what it's worth, I don't know how much it's worth now, but Winx does have the track record here, um, and he qualified... I believe second in the first race ever in NASMAR. Uh, he ran a 310, which is it's not even possible. I don't know how he was that fast. But, um, you know, we'll see how he does this week. Like you said, he's coming off of tied for his career best finish. Um, so he's got, you know, whatever momentum he can have as a driver near the bottom of the standings, he's got it right now. And so with those picks done, we are ready to send it to race day. We'll have qualifying tomorrow at seven as always and then friday at seven o'clock we will have the maobao 400 from spiral speedway we are wrapping up season two of nasmar but the regular season is almost coming to a close here and you won't want to miss the last two races of the season there's sure to be a lot of action so thank you to luke and sham for joining me and uh, we will see everybody at the track